Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about object dependencies and how you can use this tool to determine which objects are safe to delete or not. Today's question comes from Marshall in Alameda, California, one of my Platinum members. Oh, Alameda, where they keep the nuclear vessels. Now we need directions. Excuse me, sir. Can you direct me to the naval base in Alameda? It's where they keep the nuclear vessels. Marshall says, hi, I've been working on cleaning up an old database project and I've noticed that it has a lot of queries. Some of them seem unnecessary, but I'm worried about deleting something important by mistake. Is there a way to easily check which queries are being used by other objects like forms and reports so I know which ones are safe to delete? Yes, Marshall, there's something called object dependencies. It's a tool in the database. I don't use it often myself, but if you're in a situation like this where you want to check and make sure, hey, is this query okay to delete? You can use this to see if it has any dependence, if anything depends on it, or you know, if it depends on anything else. Usually for my beginners, when you're learning how to build a database and you're, and you're first starting out making queries, it's easier to use the query designer, right? The graphical query by example designer. And so I tell people, you know, if you want a list of customers by last name, make a query. If you want a list of customers from Florida, make a query, right? And then later on, we get into parameters and so on. And then when you transition from beginner into expert and then advance in developer levels, I tell you, well, you know, all those queries you got, we don't need all those. You don't want 5 million queries in your database. So we're going to start taking those queries and write them as SQL statements wherever we need that, either in our, our row sources or our record sources or in our VBA code, right? Try to get rid of some of those queries. But how do we know which queries are safe to delete? Another query might use that query. Some VBA code somewhere might be referencing it. So we're going to talk about all that in today's video. Now, this video is for everyone, beginner, advanced, developer alike. I'm going to show you a little bit of each. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, like VBA code stuff, just ignore it. But there's, there's something for everyone in this video. The only prerequisite is my Access Beginner 1 class. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. Go watch it. All right. So here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want a copy. And if we go under Database Tools up here on the ribbon, you'll see this thing called Object Dependencies. So pick something. Like, let's pick uh, the customer form, and I'll hit Object Dependencies. And right over here, this handy-dandy pane opens up. And you can see objects that depend on me and objects that I depend on. Okay? So if you click on Objects I Depend On, you can see the customer form depends on the customer table. That's where it gets its data from. And if you open this up even more, it'll show you if the customer T depends on anything. Usually tables don't. If you want to switch objects, just come over here, pick on, like, the customer contact F then hit refresh over here. That switches the object and you can see what this guy depends on. Now he depends on the contact table, the customer table, and the contact form. This is a little more of a detailed form. It's this guy right here. It's got the customer information and the contact form as a subform inside of it. So you can see why it depends on all these things. And here, for example, the contact form, you can click this little arrow and it'll show you that he depends on these tables, right? Which also depends on this form because it's a subform, right? And so on, you can go down the list. This will go four levels deep, by the way. All right, pick something else like a report, like our invoice report, hit refresh. You can see it's dependent upon the order table, right? The order detail query, which gets its data from the detail table. The order invoice query, which gets <laughs> it's dependent on all this stuff. So you can see, right, all the things that depend on and are dependent on by that object. Now, if you're trying to decide if something's safe to delete, you wanna go with the objects that depend on me. Okay, so nobody depends on this report. If you delete this report, no one else is saying, hey, where's that report, right? If you come up top here and pick a table like the customer table and hit refresh, obviously you'll see here, there's a whole bunch of stuff that depends on the customer table. So don't delete that. If you pick something like this customer last name, first name queue and hit refresh, you can see, okay, that's dependent on uh, the order form needs it, right? So we can see in the order form that this guy, this combo box right here uses this customer LF queue to give us that last name, first name, okay? So we can see we don't, we can't delete that guy, right? What about this order summary queue? Click on that and hit refresh and oh, nobody uses it. I just, I just made that by the way. Um, order summary queue just shows you a list of each order, uh, the order total, whether it's paid, the customer and so on, but no one's using it. There's no forms and reports that are based on it. So it's safe to delete or is it? Now you have to be careful relying on this object dependencies because there are some things it doesn't check. It doesn't check VBA code, for example, and it doesn't always catch functions that might be in your forms that use that query. Let me show you a few examples. 
let's start with VBA because VBA is the easy one, right? Let's say you want to just give me a total of all of my order summaries, right? Which would be the sum of all of the order totals in the order summary queue. All right, I'm gonna hop into VBA just a little bit right now, but that's okay, don't worry about it. If you wanna learn more about VBA, I got a whole lesson on VBA. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. VBA is not scary once you get the hang of it. All right, but let's just say in my hello world button, I want to message box, okay, some number. What's the number going to be? Well, let's desum. Let's say, let's say the order total is, right, and then we're going to say uh, desum the order totals from the order, order summary queue. Just give me that value. Add them all up. I don't care. Okay. If you want to learn more about desum, by the way, I got a video on that. I'll put a link down below. It just basically adds up all the values in a table or query, and you can add criteria over here. All right. So if I come back here and I reopen this and hit the button, boom, there's my order total. That's the total of all the orders in my system, 51,000, right? Okay. Now let's use the object dependencies to see if this guy is now listed as a dependency. So database tools, object dependencies, come over here and then hit refresh and it's not showing up, okay? So if you have VBA anywhere where this guy is required, it's not gonna show up in the object dependencies. Now, VBA is easy to deal with because we can do a global search in our VBA, right? Even if this is closed, right? Even if that's closed, let's say you're on a different form module or a global module, whatever, you just go control F, that'll bring up the find window, right? Type in the object you're looking for. So we're looking for order summary Q, all right, you're going to pick current project that's going to search the entire database, all of your modules, your form modules, your report modules, your module modules, right, and hit find next, and you can go, oh, there it is. I, it's in use here. So you can either take the SQL out of there and put it in here instead, right, or do something else with it, or just don't delete that object, okay? So VBA is easy. We can search our VBA. Likewise, if you're using queries or such like that in the objects inside forms themselves, it usually catches them. I say usually, because not always. Like if you've got a combo box or a list box that has a query in here, or even an SQL statement, it'll usually catch it, okay? Uh, example, let's say here, design view. All right, let's just say I make a quick list box down here. Okay, let's take a list box right there. Let's say I wanna see just you know all the orders here, for example, again, find the values in a table of query, go to queries, go to order summary queue, Okay, let's bring in the, um, the order ID, the order date, and the order total. Next, let's sort it by order date. Next, and this is what it's gonna look like. We'll hide that. Next, and order ID is the bound field. That's fine, we're gonna remember it for later use. And finish, and I got a whole separate lesson on list boxes and combo boxes if you wanna learn what I just did. All right, save it, take a look. Go to the order form and there's a list of all the orders but wait a minute it's showing me all of the orders in the system okay i want to change this so it only shows me this customer's orders the wizard didn't give me an option for that so go to design view let's open up this guy's properties and in this row source here you'll see where it gets its data from let me resize that so you can see it there we go all right it's basically select order id order date order total from this query all right, now to make it so that it's getting for just this customer, all I have to do is put a where clause in here. I can say where the customer ID equals forms customer F customer ID. And now it should show me just this customer's orders. And there we go. Now, since I modified that SQL statement, let's see if it sees the dependency. Let's go over here, database tools, object dependencies, this guy, Let's go refresh and okay, good. Um, no, that's I depend on, let's go depend on me. Don't forget the two. Okay, and there it is, there it is. Customer F depends on this guy. So it usually catches it if it's in the row source SQL statement. Now, when doesn't it catch it? Right, watch this one. Let's say, let's get rid of that list box. Let's say instead of that list of orders, I wanna put this customer's order total in a box on this form. So their order total shows up here instead of family size, okay? So again, let's go into the control source. I'll zoom in for you. Let's set this equal to, we'll use that dsum again, dsum, and it's going to be order total from the order summary queue where customer ID equals 
the customer ID on the current form. Okay. Hit OK. Let's save it. Close it. Close it. Open it. All right. There's this customer's order total. That seems about right. 4,500, right? Let's see. Uh, 4,200, 360. Yeah, it's about right. Okay. So that's working. Now let's check the dependency. Database tools, object dependencies, objects that depend on me. Let's pick this, hit refresh, and it's not there. It's not there. And the main reason why is because it's inside of a string. If you look at the way that it's formulated, okay, this dsum, this order summary queue is inside of a text string and the database isn't, the, the object dependencies tool isn't programmed to find that. Sammy, add this to the notes for the access team. It should find that. It should look inside of those strings, I think. Okay, so that's one thing. That's This is one way in which it's it's not going to find your, your object, so you got to be careful. Now, I am going to teach you a way in the next video, which will be, let's see, today's Friday, May 10th, 2024. I'm going to teach you on Monday how we can use the database documenter to catch stuff like this. All right, there's a tool we can use to catch things like this. I'm going to teach you that on Monday. But what I'm going to emphasize today is this this will catch this tool will catch 95% of all of the instances. But the only way you can be sure is backup, backup, backup. I can't emphasize it enough. Back up your databases daily, all right? Or anytime you're going to make a change, especially if you know you're going to be deleting an object. Make a manual backup copy of it, test it for a bit and then make sure, but don't get rid of that backup because you might delete a query and then, you know, end of next quarter, when you go to run your quarterly report, it doesn't work and you realize, oh crap, I deleted that query last quarter, right? So now you can at least go back to your backup and, and get that query. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. I cover object dependencies a lot more in my Access Expert Level 2 class. It also covers table normalization, global relationships, referential integrity. This is a very good lesson. It covers lots and lots of very important core database stuff. All right, so if you want to learn more, check this out. I'll put a link down below. Be sure to tune in on Monday, and we'll talk about the database documenter and how you can use it to also catch those objects that you don't want to delete. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. 
<laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.